since you've been gone. By rainbow. Since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, hasn't it, in the world? Um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer. <laughs> funny, yeah. Uh, Carl Pilkington. Alright. Yeah. Very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. I went. Before I left. Yeah, there are some of your, uh, your old bacon rinds from that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Left there. The spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh, no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership's changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last Rajar? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think Exxon gets new listeners because mm. I think what happens is because the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of yeah, you know, smack addictions. <laughs> yeah, gout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, I've never, I haven't listened to this um, station for a year and a half, so it's, uh, that's increased by one, <laughs> yeah. which is uh, probably quite a high percentage. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, I, well, I, I mean, I suppose that, that my question, I suppose, to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why, why have you come back now? You know, bored, I was a bit bored of sitting at home. <laughs> right. You know. Okay. Yeah. Because we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um, well, we're standing in front of Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hey, the tables have turned. I remember when they were standing in for us, but uh, yeah, I d <laughs> don't know. But I, I mean, the only reason I'm here is because um, my um, my housekeeper cleans um, between one and three. Oh, right, um, that's a good idea. So I just want to get out of the house. And uh, are they are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her in yeah. so many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais. They associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs. There's a level of quality. You've put a lot of work into them. You've honed mm. it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Th those things that you know, you, you sit there. You know, we sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them. And we worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich as we speak. Yeah. You know, that you know, if you although we do like music, that is true. That's we absolutely should, right. Should we play some great I'm records? Play a great record now. You two, City of Blinding Light. I, I tell you what, I love you two now. Yeah. I honestly hated them, sort of everything from boy up to about, I think, um, Beautiful Day when that came out. I thought, oh, that's all right. I listened to the album, listen to this album. I love them now, Steve. It's a turn around, isn't it? Well, yeah, no, I, I, that's, it's, it's that kind of uh, musical insight that I'm looking for throughout this show. Really. <laughs> I it's sound fun, like Dr. Dr. Fox then, didn't I? Yeah. It's it's kind of tastes and wants and needs. Yeah. Dr. Fox. What's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I put no effort into this radio show because, uh, you know, uh, we we go to the Golden Globes the same month. We do nothing at the Sony, and Dr. Fox actually said that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really took I'm still hard. talking about it a year <laughs> yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got to yeah. let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, he's a medical man, and yeah. Well, uh, you know, you got you got to believe him. You've got to trust his opinion. You know, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I could have done without the rectal examination. I think he could have <laughs> just said. You're not very good. <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Or oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl had to. You had to um, out, go, go, go to one of those um, well clinics, didn't no, you? I didn't, no, I'm gone. Why? Because I'm, I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole. Well, it's just the people know what them places places are. We'll give you have a whole. You, have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one. Yeah, they take they take they check everything. Which you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages because I don't. No, I never go. Doctors. I never go unless I think I'm, I'm honestly gonna die there. I'm I in just agony. Think like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things. Yeah, those yeah. boot things where they do the, it's yeah, cut around a quid and they give you a com complete head to toe, don't they? But but head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The uh, they do the old uh, finger up the ass thing. Now, what is that testing for? Well, I like oh, that he said it quietly, because he's on the radio. You know, you can't say ass. Yeah. Well, say it quietly. <laughs> say it quietly. Yeah, yeah. Ass. Yeah, ass. That's what um, our mistake was, because we got, um, a complaint up how, didn't we, for saying, and I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know, yeah, and we said that word, right? So if we'd have gone, cock, <laughs> we'd have probably gotten away with it. 
You can get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it very So go on then, yeah, so. Go on So, yeah, no, I just, uh, I just, I'm not going because I'm not having that done. I don't understand what, what they're gonna find up there, that's. Your head? No, why can't we just, I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. Do you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like, you know, if they you- They would have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check <laughs> that out. They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Well, this thing about- this thing about the, uh, doctors, they- they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore, they just put it sort of like by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I- I- I don't know, I think it's something to do with, uh, if you've got something wrong with your- your diaphragm or something like that, you can't- you can't do it when they press there. I don't know. It, it shows you, them something. So you it's can't, not. You it's not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But so you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, that's good because do you remember when Carl said he's going to die of cancer, and I said why? He said I don't check me balls. I said why? He said I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you. They they feel them for you, and you can you can just relax, shut your eyes, and think of England. Well, don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them. Just leave them. And there's two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah. I don't think that's the point. I think the, the point is it- it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it-, it you've gotta mm. check the- I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if- don't- don't do it, cause they spend a lot of money saying to people, you know, have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I, I'm not- I, I'm, I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why? why, out of interest, <laughs> why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check the prostate. Check the prostate? Yeah. Cause if it's swollen, it's- it could, yeah, it, it could, you know, uh, lead to all sorts of problems. Again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> they're not going, hang on, look, look at this bald little wank fella. But there's no uh, nice way- I'll feel his balls, stick a finger up his ass, and send him home. <laughs> 300 quid, please, <laughs> on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all, la they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, 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 what's this? <laughs> no, I'm uh, not going anyway. Sorry. Really, you're not going because you don't want- No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter, it's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as bad. <laughs> At a dinner party. Oh God! Oh well, hello, hello, Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind, Roger? Do you mind? Uh, <laughs> would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it though, Doctor Dre, uh, Doctor Fox, Fox, any of those? Doctor Who. I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> would you allow Christopher Eccleston to stick his <laughs> big right, northern finger up your? Got a song on anyway. <laughs> what? <laughs> Beanie Siegel. I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. Beanie Siegel. Feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. I love your summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. on that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that, that they may, know, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the the wonderful little gem that we found just there, a little rough diamond in the in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man, a wasn't crone. he? Yeah. And he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And, well, he, and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns, and three years later you're exactly where you started. <laughs> so, good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington yeah. to um, our new you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah, when I say mind, I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought, what, 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 Look at what, his face! Oh. There is a website. Have you got the oh, website? Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like, please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned. But listen, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face. You'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah. Now, what's it? What's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah. Freewebs.com. Freewebs. dot com. Yeah. S forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash. K dash man forward slash the K man. It's okay. complicated. It is. Yeah. Do it again. Say it again. But get a pencil right. now. They've all got a pencil now. Freewebs dot com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man forward slash. Now, when you say dash, is it is it a dash or is it is, is it, it an middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore? Is it is it in the middle of the word or is it hover in the middle of the word or is it the, is it at the bottom? It's just just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore? or Is it a dash? Try both. <laughs> he, he covered it down. Have a go. Wait, <laughs> that's the oh. sort of level we're talking about. Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I thought what we should do is we could hide <laughs> <Try> that. <both. laughs> if I 
imagine that. Imagine Bill Gates. Yeah, or a teacher. <laughs> in an exam. Hot down both. <laughs> Uh, multiple choice! Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. So what I'm particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> um, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love it. Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We'll maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Um, mm. So, here's the first up, first question. All right, you got your thinking head on? Go on. <laughs> you wurzel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what, for me, or...? <laughs> Already... <laughs> no, Ronnie Corbett. No, no, but, but what... Do you mean, like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of perfect happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? Unlikely. Yeah, I imagine it's a twenty-four-hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A never-ending popsicle. Go on, go on. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with anything. So, Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? Probably, I like I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes, and beans for a, for tea. Yeah. And you're, not, you're not. You're not. Yeah. Right. Well, let's move on. We'll come back to that one. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're aiming high enough for. Uh, well, what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um, I I wouldn't have the. I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah. I'd have fish fingers and beans. <laughs> See, I'm not a huge fan of the beans. <laughs> really? So yeah. your idea of um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers, is <laughs> just it? Just fish fingers. Okay, good. Alright, second question. What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm, going to the doctors. Okay. So that. more, so, so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it, you see. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't <laughs> Any don't, particular <laughs> doctor? I don't want to live forever either. No, I just want no. good innings. I just want to get to about 80, 83, 84. <laughs> 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 Specific. Yeah. Okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh. Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill is pretty good. You like yeah, him? Yeah, very good. He's Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> That's, he's not that good at that. I know that that, that even if the Nazis had won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh, That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, doesn't it? Go on. Oh, if it's something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <coughs> they don't, they don't, they don't kill what, people what, now what, for, uh, parking illegally. But, but what sort of, what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know, but what is that? What, what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine, hanging, uh, uh hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh. Can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just It's not, all bad. Why, mm, why, why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's, what's the point in keeping them, uh, you know, people, people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just cause it's like, right, that's that Don, who's, who's next? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ them on a radio show! Uh, yeah! Play a record, right, next question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of, uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the Thorns. Yeah, that Maybe you're less familiar with the, uh, different elements of the Thorns mm. solo work. No, no. from Matthew Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, which is your Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It was great, that. Yeah, just asking Carl some of these, uh, Q&A questions. This might be my idea of perfect happiness, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him, I just watch him look around, when you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like, you know when the owners say, it's like the cat can understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's like, well, he's on the edge look. of that. He's yeah. on the edge of that. You think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never, whenever you say something to him, it might be some, you know, a revelation or some. He always picks up on the wrong side. You know, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes. It's a bit like having a fourteen-year-old French exchange student. Yeah. You know, their, yeah. their English is not amazing. They roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly. But it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this the wrong way. I like him st because he's stupid mm. in a way. Mm. <laughs> No, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But even though I think he is considered uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of there, Rick, when you think of the- Well, uh... um, he was talking to me the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of, uh, gonna help me out with some of the research, and I wanna, I want him to do some on the DVD for it, right? And, uh, he, um, was talking about it, and uh, he was talking about, um, he says that uh, in the future they reckon we'll be able to, soon, he said, they'll be able to take us into space and it's gonna cost us hundred and fifty thousand pounds. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said, the, when they went up there, right, he said, when Louis Armstrong went, <laughs> in 1966, <laughs> right, he said, it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah. space yeah, exploration. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're expanding- Are we talking about the finger in the arse again here? Or is space? Else, what, what is the point in going Because you're expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, and the human uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we going to do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, though. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? That what, what, what has got to be there for it to be a worthwhile life? Just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest, what I, would you I, be I happy with finding what, out on the moon? Just a video? Just, just just something. I don't think they l looked hard enough anyway when they got there, because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? That's but what, what I mean is- But they took is, that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in, in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go, Pff. What yeah, do you mean there's not much that. there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? Well, Africa, just in general. Well, the, anywhere the, like that, the, the desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got, have a good look round. Probably the, uh, where all life came from and uh, uh, probably half a million yeah, species of animals live there. buildings and that and stuff. Oh, just, buildings. Well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back. I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially when we haven't done everything there is to do here. I Go mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's, there's no medical man has been <laughs> in this room. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, there's definitely an unexplored uh, cavern. <laughs> in right, in front. All right, Steve. Would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. Thanks They'd spin him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that will be it. He'd, yeah. he'd feel sick. But my worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have- because I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was awful- all, it was steamed up in there. No, I couldn't see anything. I got shot straight away. I was out of the game. It was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. yeah you don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not- uh, well, yeah, but what- what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Yeah. Cause you've gotta be- what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4. <laughs> the, uh, follow-up winners in Pop Idol. I can see it as his- as his eyes glaze over. Uh, a couple more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, what do you, uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably, I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm, I'm trying to, like, learn stuff now. Yeah. 
Not, not mentally. But, no, yeah. He reckons he's learnt more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life reading a couple of science books I gave him. Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's- <laughs> Brilliant. It's noisy. Traffic that. I yeah. think they were thinking more- sort More of, of what, what, what fears that. have you got? What worries? Do you, do you, do you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you I worry about there's it? There's no point, there's no point, is there? Cause there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the, what, the, the little Chinese fellow across the road? Just, just, just stuff that, that I've got to sort out, you know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? <laughs> it's true, that no, is I true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on their shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't what worry about wars and stuff going on because there's now I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Go on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record, Tom. <laughs> the who? I mean, that's that's got to be one of the. Best rock tracks ever, isn't it? Oh, there's no oh, arguing. Did I sound like Dr. Fox again? A little bit. Okay. That's a good <laughs> thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're gonna get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Yeah? It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit, what? Have we- Have we got Rockbusters? Well. Ah, hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners- <laughs> Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. listeners won't believe their luck when Hold they hear on. Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters. Have we got- well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well, I've been away, haven't I? So, I've sort of got a few things that I've I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, because usually you do your research quite well, don't you, when you get uh, off and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you it. saying, though? Are you saying that there's- it's kind of monkey news? We'll-, we'll we might have time to do something later. Well, yeah, we can, we've got to have a monkey news. I love news, it when it? he teases us for these monkey news. <laughs> <laughs> we've yeah. had emails about that- that website address. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was- it was a- a-, a what's the name? A underscore. An underscore. Okay, so first. give it out one more time. They go to this to find out about Carl Pilkerton. Someone's put in a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's well, they're not great. They're just uh, <laughs> freewebs.com/slash/the underscore k underscore man slash. Okay, forward slashes all the all the way. Yeah, except yeah. the underscores. Is there the end of course, yeah. This is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know, yeah. It's rubbish, it's so boring. <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh dear. Is, mm -hmm. there, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says, um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, when when you say it like that, some of the stuff we cover does sound a little bit of uh, you know drivel. Well, sometimes. Yeah. Carl was worried. Carl was worried about swearing because we were talking about finger ass and that. He's generally worried. And, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing, although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio. It might be offensive. People aren't listening. I mean, you know, the f word, the c word, and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the f word, they bleep out the u. So it goes the beep. Right? What? What? So they go. It's not offensive. I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, uh in the C word, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? But I, I don't no, see but how it can be offensive. You can't. It it's can't be. Can't it? be. He's, he's a thinker. He's a philosopher. His name is his okay. name is Kant. That is his actual Sorry. name. Yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of. Kant's from what I can- oh, he hasn't changed his name. I think his father, his grandfather- uh, Yeah, they're all- Yeah, they've got German people- Oh, that's German is, I assume, full of Kant's. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What? Well, so, what- what else was So he can change the vowel. So could I say, um, could I say, uh, uh- Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C-U-M-P. Now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say, you fulking cump. Right. Yeah. Okay. What, I, well, I, I need a schnit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, that's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah. W yeah you got, although yeah. Willy is Willy offensive? Could you say Willy? It's tricky. Willy tricky. Willy Wonka, and his and uh, Willy Wonka and his falcon oh. cumps. Yeah. That would be fine. That would be it? absolutely fine. Is that all right then, Carl? Any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, it's not so much a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. Um, 
two elderly men mm -hmm. found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. Mm. <laughs> what? What? What are you thinking there? Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll do that old though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave Carl's it got a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think th this is fine. It's, it's, I, I'd say that Carl's views don't reflect the views of XFM, mm. right? Carl's got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, uh, let Carl- But, but that annoys that me the way- yeah, but I think- What? People will probably agree with me, but for some reason- <laughs> What? The first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it, but now, because of reaction of people- <laughs> What? It, I don't understand- I don't know why I can't say that. What's but, your theory? Explain your theory, in a nutshell. Just like you don't see a, 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 a you know, sort of a, a thirty-three-year-old Chinese person. <laughs> no, but, but at the same time, you what know, do you mean you don't yeah, see a thirty-three-year-old? I'm not, I'm not having Chinese a go. Person. At the same time, you don't see that many fat ones either. So in a way, that's that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean? But you your news a... isn't bad news because it's not true. But wait, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a thirty-three-year-old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young, young ones, uh, and then, like, you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> I don't know what this theory is based on! So you see old ones and then you see, uh, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between? Yeah. Well, what I, do you mean? So what's the oldest, what's, okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think? About 22. 22. So you've seen lots of 22 year olds. So you've seen range from babies to 22 year old tw uh, Chinese people. Yeah. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What, 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 when, when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? About well, 49. <laughs> <laughs> so specific. What, what do you mean? When you say they don't age well, what do you mean they don't age well? You think that, you mean that middle aged ones look old? Because you think at 23, when they start 23, they happy birthday to you. <laughs> And they look up and oh jeez, it's fifty two. What what do you mean? No, I just I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't oh, you alright then, here's here's a question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about thirty two. Well, tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh Chinese talent um currently on British TV. Right, and I'll, and I'll, I'll pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee? Mmm. How long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not, not, not really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What, what age was he when he died? Thirty-three, I think. Well, I would have <laughs> never guessed that. Well, what do you think, how old do you think he was? Probably about... Forty-two. What, you know Burt Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them, because it was 60s, 70s. But how old did he look, though? If, if, if he walked in and someone said, you never guess how old he is, what would you have said? <laughs> right then, there's my point then. There's my point. I have to say, I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> For the, for the Kant discussion, the, uh, Orientals. I, I, do you know what I think? I think, um, uh, Kant, uh, as a philosopher, um, is very popular in Essex. Because I hear him saying his name all the time oh, whenever I go now. through- What? They're all shouting this and that. <laughs> Kings of Leon and XFM. Carl. Did you Merchant Carl Pilkington? Oh. Carl! Dead air! Talk! Oh, I'm just, I'm just looking at it now. Yeah, but that's no good on radio! You can't just look at something! You gotta talk! Is he even more backward than I remember? I don't know! It's just that someone's emailed in. Yeah, so you gotta tell yeah, the no, listeners no, that! Them now, I'm telling them now, I'm doing it! Someone's emailed in from Tokyo, mm. saying that he's getting married in a few months mm. to a Japanese woman, she's 27, <laughs> just want to know how long I've got so she starts looking old. <laughs> well, how long do you reckon, according to your theory? Mm. About... Probably about four years. <laughs> or four years and that. So... <laughs> what would you advise him? To get out now, or...? Well... Have some good, sort of, wedding pictures done and that. <laughs> oh, God! What? God! It's not true! The theory's not true! Well, we'll see, we'll see, won't we?
Oh yeah, oh yeah, great. In four years' time, he's gonna send a picture going, "Oh, you're right, Carl. Look, she looks like a prune." What? He's gonna suddenly start saying his girl. It's not true. It's not gonna happen. It's that thing though, isn't it, of looking at her mum. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, isn't there? That you shouldn't shouldn't really meet up with your girlfriend's sort of parents and that. Sure. Because no. you just sort of get a little taster of what's to come mm. and what have you. Then what's to come with yours? Uh. It's a good job I didn't meet her early on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're gonna be in such trouble! No, they don't listen. It's all right. Really? Well, she Suzanne might. does, doesn't she? She'll probably be out. Really? But she, she knows. She's got some sense. <laughs> yeah, when you get back! Yeah. You went on holiday with them, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been on since then, haven't we? I don't think so. Yeah, I went on holiday, holiday last week, been away, but that was just me and Suzanne. Talk oh, about that it? later. Yeah, okay. Oh, the, the, that's coming up. Plus, yeah. of course, Rockbusters, the return of Rockbusters. Let's start Let's Rockbusters. Do Rockbusters. Let's now. do Rockbusters. Let's get it rolling, because we've got- I have got some amazing prizes. I went to the Americas and I brought back gifts. Not your tobacco and your potatoes, but brilliant prizes. Now, quite seriously, these are not the usual tat. You will win some tat for Rockbusters, okay? We've got DVDs, uh, CDs, uh, uh, things like that, right? But the winner- of Rockbusters today, we'll go through to a chance to win the prizes in the- in week six. We're only here for six weeks, by the way. This is our first of six shows. Thank God for that. Yeah. And, um, I got- I went to- I went to do The Simpsons, uh, last weekend, and I've got, um, a drawing here, an original drawing of Homer by Matt Groening. See that? Look at that. Uh, it's Homer there. Your pal Matt Groening, May the 18th, 2005. And Homer's saying, I love Carl because he's stupid like me. And that's going to be framed, original drawing. Uh, that is worth, a, I think, a lot, but I promised Matt Groening that it will not go on eBay. So please, I hope it goes to a fan. Um, I've also got a rare Spinal Tap poster. Uh, met with Christopher Guest and he signed that, Nigel Tufnell. Um, so, uh, fans of Spinal Tap and The Simpsons. Possibly the two greatest things ever, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, my friend Rob, who did flannels with me, has drawn us three as flannels. As Steve, there a little gog lanker. As me, there a little bloke dumplant and little Carl Pilgerton, Pink Floyd numbskrunt. And these are all these are going to be framed. So some very nice prizes. And I got a little surprise for you. Obviously, I met Homer. Um, press that little button there. Listen to this. Hi, this is Homer Simpson. I like Carl and his perfectly round bald head. If you put three holes in it, it looks just like my bowling ball. Brilliant. Actual proof that you've uh, met the people themselves, that the prizes are bona fide and genuine, but don't enter this week's Rockbusters thinking you're going to win those prizes automatically. No. This week you just win the usual tat. What is the but, tat, Steve? Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. But you go it's forward for. to the big, uh, the big showdown, the big final competition in week six where you get the chance to win those all quite One person wins prizes. all those beautiful so just uh, everyone collectible goes prizes. Yeah, everyone, yeah, the winners of each week go into the draw. What is Rockbusters, Carl? Uh, we've wet their appetite. I think play a record and maybe some wonderful adverts and then come back with Rockbusters. It's that kind of teasing that has made this a potential award-winning show. Bronze, I think, next yeah. year. Can we just swap that round and do ads and the song? Uh, whatever way suits you, mate. Go on. XFM 104.9, <laughs> Magic Numbers, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener, if we suddenly just go off air, right, it's because <laughs> champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Because Steve... Yeah. Getting Sorry ready to open this champagne, right, just took that wire thing off, just put it there, of course because it's warm, it just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now, I didn't bring in champagne to toast our <laughs> return to the radio, I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um, actually uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine and I'm just trying some and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, just looking for free stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods. Um, oh, okay, it's not just like champagne Definitely stuff. not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us free? Uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feel jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And I, as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Now, what's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I've brought my camera in um, 
uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head, got the cork. Rick, I got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, an yeah. opportunity like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne, that opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause I, cause that would've made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely, bald little sort of dome. Mm. Yeah. Um, put your head, we'll put your head right down, yeah? yeah. He'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it mm. for, uh, like mm. a website or something. Maybe we'll make yeah. that the finale of today's show. That'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sponsored well, by Lindauer Sparkling Water. Oh yeah, the sound, the sound of a <laughs> cracking cork against Carl's skull. Sponsored by Lindauer. <laughs> sponsored by Lindauer. Available now. <laughs> Great. All right, we're doing Rockbusters then. Oh, okay, <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because there might be a few new listeners. It's, block <laughs> it's Blockbusters. Right, go on then. Well, no. it's not, it's not Blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't would, they? Yeah, that was actually He amazing. says they're a cryptic clue, it's not cryptic, yeah. it's well, what am I, it's like, what am I thinking? This competition is like, what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second, let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue, is that right, Carl? And from that, we're Cryptic. supposed to deduct mm -hmm. which band or artist you're thinking of. So yeah. for instance there was a Well there was one, the West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head and that was Detroit Spinners. The Trout Spinners. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit, Spinners, Detroit, Detroit Spinners. Spinners. Yeah. yeah. There was also what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas, what? Wet Knee Houston, Wet yeah, Knee that, that is the Houston. level of Carl's That's what you're cruise. working with. But could I just say there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or ironic. This, he thinks these are- th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. This so is the best stuff you can come up with. Yeah. Right, so, so there's, there's three of them, yeah. right? I give you the cryptic clue. Yeah, not to cryptic. help you along, well it is. Yeah, uh, and really. I give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three no, of them. Is, this is on the text only, we don't want emails on this one, just It's eight. the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the, the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for, uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and that uh, they win a uh, handful of tat, which, would you like to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure where it is, yeah. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks time when you're playing for all that amazing stuff Ricky's got, we've got the sign uh, genuine exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed Spinal Tap poster. So this is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by Matt Groening. And it's such a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely. It's not, it's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's, it's just such a shame that Let's the, just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right. The first one. Go on. Uh, what you got to remember is it's a band or an artist, that sort that X of M play as well, right? Right then, so, uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, cause X-Men play the Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> don't they? Alright, these three. Okay. Give it away a bit. These are, these are X-Men bands. Okay, yeah. Right, uh, if you got, if you got like a, a ball. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just, just I know, the, you don't think about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different every time he says it. it there'd be <laughs> some different. Look, he's, look, go on then. Go. Right, so if you get a bulb, right? A when, bulb what? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a- A light bulb. A light bulb. <laughs> oh, a, a light bulb. So okay, you get a bulb. Yeah. You get a bulb, yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Right, go on. So you get a bulb. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, bulb, yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you eating a gobstopper? What are you doing? <laughs> you play a song then. No, come on! <laughs> get, get the clue out, for goodness Go sake! So the, the cryptic clue is, so, if you get a bulb, right, so- <laughs> That's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right, if you get a saw, then right, if you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right, you look after that bulb, mm. and you teach it stuff, Jesus what? Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This that's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. Had 18 months to get it. But imagine it. That's, that, that's not a clue. That's an essay. I don't know what it is. It's a conversation I don't know with if yourself. He means a light bulb? A bulb like you plant in the garden? What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Okay, it doesn't no, matter. It, it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> Right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. You look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's going on? <laughs> Brilliant! Oh, so the initials of the band. R, right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second oh, one. Jesus. Uh, people have a problem doing this. 
when they get home from, from like an, a night out drinking. Right? What, what's the problem they've got? Right? The, the initial there, K. What's the band? Right? People get in from having a night out, they'll have a problem doing this. What is it? What's, what's, what's the problem? Okay. And clue right. number three? I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right? That's, that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah, and, and that's the band the C. C. Right, so three bands there. Three cl uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in, 83 XFM. Just, just send the three, uh, three band names, that'll do, won't it? Can That'd they do fine. a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Just right. send it in there. Give them again, uh, quickly then, Carl. Right then, so get a bulb when it's young and that. Look Brilliant. after it. Different, totally after different. It. Teach it stuff. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Ah. Ah, what's the band, right? Yeah. The second one, mm. people have a problem doing this when they get home late at night, you mm. know, they've been out drinking and that, they get home, what, yeah. what problem are they going yeah. to have? Mm. K is the initial. Mm. Third, third one, I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Mm. Brilliant. C, C is the initial. Play a record. I mean, it's, it's abomination. Like that. Embrace, glorious day on XFM 104.9. Rick, there may be listeners, um, tuning in thinking, They've got something better to do, for instance, switching off the radio and just staring blankly at the wall for uh, the next <laughs> half an hour. But yeah. no, because the, what they're going to miss is our grand finale oh, yeah. to this, which is of course um, sponsored by sponsored by Lindauer's, the uh, sparkling w sparkling wine solution to a hot summer's day. Yeah, uh, that we're going to be firing a cork. Did you just make that? Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Good. Um, <laughs> They're going to be firing a cork, uh, at Carl's head, uh, just for the sound. Uh, just I was just thinking the sound. Huh? It's not happening. Yes, it's it not is. You said no, no. We've said it is now. We promised it to the listeners. Yeah, come on. I'm not happy with it. Why? Because the pain. Well, I, I've never had it done, so I don't know how painful it is. Well, what's well, the reason to do it then? Yeah, we've got to try it out, haven't you? It's you're perfectly. It's 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 like mm. a little like a little cowbell or yes. wood block. He said, I just, "That's what I'm hoping for." Yeah. I'm hoping for pop. Mm. Like, uh, and I'm gonna film it for my website. Brilliant. So go to that this week, um, uh, rickyjerase.com and mm -hmm. see Carl Pilkerson getting hit. Uh, a high-powered cork coming out of, um, uh, uh, Lindauer Sparkling Wine. <laughs> <laughs> Lindauer Sparkling Wine. And of course, if you uh, want to send us anything in, and um, perhaps next week that you feel we could, um, actually, that, maybe that'd that's be great. It. That's the, that's the, us to do this is like interactive because a lot amazing. of people plan the show. Like Dr. Fox plans his show. We sort of come up, we riff on the, uh, so we, that's a great idea. Send stuff in that we could harm Carl with. Yeah, we can harm Carl. Harm Carl. We yeah. do a do a jingle. Harm Carl. I always it's, want one on. of those George Foreman grills. I oh, always want one of them. I know, but that's too uh, the, too much, isn't get, it? We could. What if we just pressed his head inside it? But, we'd, but, have to, we'd have to put it on. Put just, it on. See, yeah. see, yeah. Just squeeze oh, his head inside it. I've got to do that thing with a tea towel one day. You know that thing I did with a tea towel? You put a tea towel around his head, right? Tie it. I put a wooden spoon in, and you only have to turn it like a couple of inches, and it it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really is, yeah. yeah. So we'll be firing a cork at Carl's head. I'll be filming it for the web. Website. So that's coming up be about, uh, about ten to three. Look forward to that. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I'm loving this. This is my. Oh, I just. Uh, oh, just being in a room with him. I just can't. I want to squeeze his head all well, the time. I tell you, if you're a fan of um, imbeciles and idiots, yeah, you're missing out if you're not watching Celebrity Love Island. I, I watched about well, thirty seconds of it, and I hate them. Just, uh, just desperate uh, idiots and slappers. <laughs> I, I actually. Angers me. I, I I switched on Celebrity Love Island. The first thing I thought is, where's a tsunami when you need one? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but, but seriously, but there's a guy on there. There's a guy on there. Paul, De I think his name's Paul Denan, ex of um, Hollyoaks, and he's an absolute joy because, like Carl, he's an absolute simpleton. Oh really? And it's fantastic. And he was on one week, and he was talking about how he fancied lazy Lady Isabella Harvey. Oh yeah. And he said to her, he said um. Thing is, right? I really fancy her because um, she don't like reading books, and I don't like <laughs> reading books. <laughs> I got something in common. But I love the idea that, they, that he's attracted to someone for something they don't do. <laughs> I know, you know. Yeah. I've never killed a kid. What, She's never killed a kid. What, We're gonna get what about sleep around? That'd yeah. be a good thing to be attracted to someone for. Oh, just honestly, and Big Brother's the same. Is it? Just a load of ropey old cats. Um, uh, yeah, I know. Just like a horrible, cellulited, wobbly rice arsed fat titted tarts oh. and idiots. And show offs and are they? They're all they're, are they. They all disgust me for a different reason. Mm. I don't know which one to hate most, <laughs> most and why. They they 
they all give me a couple of reasons to hate That's them. That's what the nomination should be. Yeah. You know, nominate who do you hate the most. Cause I- Absolutely. I, you know, I thought I was gonna switch on and find that actually, you know, people like Abby Titmus and Rebecca Luz had been misrepresented by the press. Oh, well, the one that wanked off a pig in public? Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Was that- did you say wanked off? I said wonked off a pog. Wonked off a pog. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? But I mean- So, so, so uh, it's, it's uh, amazing, Rebecca. I mean, let's, let's, uh, don't even get me started on Abby Titmus. Don't well, even get me- there's- the, 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 don't- uh, I like the idea of her, uh, of her parents, perhaps going to, you know, some kind of, um, you know, someone's birthday or whatever, meeting some old friends who've probably oh, yeah. been away living in another country. Yeah. How's young Abby? Is she still a nurse, saving lives? No, she gets her tits out for a living now! Oh, aren't you funny? <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Rebecca, well, Rebecca Lewis, um, by her own admission, I don't know if it's true, but by- but she said, she sleeps with a married man, then sold her story to papers, then wank, wonked off a pog, <laughs> yeah. right? That's a hell of a CV, That's, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. That is amazing. I bet her nan's very, very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, are there all- are there, are, oh, God, don't- just forget it. Don't get me started. I'll be watching every night for the oh, next yeah, ten yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't not. Is it? it you, my adrenaline rushes. I and you. You get. Oh God! I just tune in to see. You, uh, it's almost like you tune in to see which one gets hurt. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Emotionally scarred. But maybe one of them will come through. Well, we'll find out. We're always going to be exactly. We're going to find out that one of them was like re had a really, really bad childhood, and we feel sorry for her for yeah. a little. You know, like the Jade Goody syndrome or something. And yeah. oh God! Yeah. Then they release an exercise video. Oh, Carl. We gotta get in you in on this. Oh, imagine Carl in Big Brother. That would be a joy. That would be amazing. But you turned on and you hated it, didn't you? Yeah, I gave it th like three minutes and it's gone. Yeah. There's always something better on though. You annoy me that you watch it. You may yeah. about it now, but you I know, it. I, 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 I know, yeah. I know. There's always something better. I, I, I really did not watch any of Celebrity Love and that was just too awful. I think celebrities are worse than, uh, um, general public though to me because if they're so desperate, they want nine little bites of the cherry and it's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Well, at least these people, you know, they, they think that they're gonna get out of their uh, job they don't like maybe or, you know, it, it's sort of like, I, I, you know, I give them their fifteen minutes, but it's oh god. Oh. Well, but there's always something. I mean, when we went, were out the other night, Steve, right? There's a program on about uh, a spider that's a foot long and eats chicken. No <laughs> one's, <laughs> no one's I talking don't about it. I what do you mean? What do you mean? No, well, I, I just- I'm sorry! I had to stand up because I thought I was gonna explode! What do you mean there's a spider that's a foot when, long when and we, chicken? There was a program on about it, about yeah. how there's this spider in the jungle or something, but yeah. I missed it because it was out, but no one's talking about that in the papers. <laughs> that's me, that's- that's a worry. That's about why! In case it nicks your Sunday roast. What do you mean? No, well, no, but if it likes chicken now, Rick, you yeah, know, yeah. in, in like two years, who knows what it might I like. I know, it move up the evolutionary ladder, no, it start liking Carl, then humans. No, I'm not yeah. Yeah. about the chicken bit, because I eat chicken, that isn't that shocking, but the fact it's a foot long, <laughs> and, and no one's- it's just on on a Thursday night, no one's talking about it. <laughs> what do you expect, though? What do you expect from this? It's got a, its own PR. What do you want- what do you want this spider to be- to be famous? What- what- where is it? Where is it? It's in the jungle. It's not worrying anyone, then, is it? It's not gonna move. Why, it's not gonna- can, though. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not gonna move? Well, how is it gonna get here? Is it gonna get on a bus? These waves and that, they come in bananas and all that. So, don't worry about it. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not if you're gonna be like that. Anyway, listen, um, we better line up Babushka, we better play that surely, because I know you need to analyse those lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's very important to you, I know. We've still got that cork, uh, hitting. Oh, cork on their head's gonna be great. We're gonna put his little head down and really we'll give it a firing. Sponsored by Linda Respark. Jess's Girl by Rick Springfield. The reason I played that is twofold. One, it's one of the prizes we're giving away. It's an album called Rock Gods, and that's with a Z. Right? And an umlaut. <laughs> over the O. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got- it's got Kiss, Judas Priest, Deep Wounds of Darkness. It's, I mean, it really is good. It's all- it's all your classic, um, rock tracks. The other reason I want to play it is because I like that song, and it's a great little up to bubblegum pop song, rock, you know, great, but it's got one of the worst lyrics in it. He's, uh, you know, he's worried about, um, bringing up the fact that he loves his girlfriend's, uh, his, his, uh, his bo uh, mate's girlfriend, and he goes, I'll bring it up, he goes, uh, I, I, you know, I tell her that I love her, but, um, the point may be moot. <laughs> Just <laughs> He doesn't use that in a rock song. <laughs> the point may be moot. 
<laughs> well, I was listening to uh, yeah. Christian O'Connell on the breakfast show when he had these bounty hunter thing running a couple of weeks back, and um, I don't know what happened, but anyway, he ended up with Brian Adams in the studio doing a live session. Brian, you know, good nature or whatever, yeah. but you can't help but feel with Brian that he sort of he thinks that he's Bruce Springsteen, but yeah. there's something wrong. I mean, he's got the voice and the guitar, he can play and everything, but yeah. there was a lyric and he, he he played it completely earnestly, and it was a session, and the lyric was something. It was from his recent album, and the lyric was along the lines of, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, uh. I'm sat in my hotel room, there's a knock at the door and I get kind of nervous. I'm hoping it's you, it's just room service. <laughs> <laughs> Which is extraordinary, but Christian came up with the best, uh, it came, they finished it, and obviously Christian was thinking, what did I say? And he came up with the best answer if you've had a session that you're not entirely convinced by. He just said quite simply, that sounded great. That's good. Which is amazing. That, yeah. Who are you complimenting there, the engineer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... The sound oh recordist, God. what does that mean? <laughs> That's great! That sounded great. Yeah, good, we got some good mics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Brian Adams. Is it true he bought the pub next door to him and closed it down because they were noisy? I hope so. Yeah, that's a good, that's what yeah, money's yeah, yeah. for. Oh, that exactly. is what money's for, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely right. Waking up the neighbours. That was his album, wasn't it? That, that was, right. that, that's 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 that was right. I don't know if that was before or after that, whether it was related or not. Well, if but you buy a house next to a pub, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So move, rather than ruining the fun for everyone. It's more good advice from Carl Pilkington. Carl, oh, while we're talking yeah. to you, we should give these answers to Rockbusters. It's the big quiz. Um, and of course, the winner this week goes forward to play in the grand final yeah. in six weeks' time where they get to win all those amazing gifts. We signed, a signed Homer drawn, yeah. um, especially yeah, stuff, yeah. For, for Carl by Matt Groening, uh, Nigel Tufnell signed rare poster. They're, they're, they're amazing. Should we give away a sort of, uh, maybe a, a, a Original print uh, behind the scenes of extras. We've got some amazing yeah, pictures just filming that. extras. I was uh, thinking the other day, you know, like I'm how excited I am to be with Carl and let off corks on his head. Well, our editor, long suffering editor Nigel, we worked with Ben Stiller, Kate Winslet, Sam Jackson, all these people for eight weeks. It was amazing. But my highlight, I, I was that thought about it, and my highlight was dressing Nigel up, our editor, in a baby grow. Sure. It was, I planned it, but we got the, 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 um, department, um, uh, costume department hired it and we dressed it up and it looked brilliant, didn't it? Yeah. And it's just, and it's- And that is BBC licence fee money <laughs> going towards you <laughs> dressing up your editor. Cause you didn't pay for it. <laughs> the BBC paid for it, so that <laughs> is how your money is being spent, people. But, but, it's available on the DVD again. Exactly. Nothing's wasted. Which you have to buy for <laughs> 15 quid. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's, a win -win. it's like it's the whole thing is one big reality game show, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, anyway, so, yeah, just, give us the, give us the. Clues. Go on, give us the clue. I haven't got give an idea. Go on, give me the clue then again. Right. Well, do you want to say who the winner is or? No. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear the answer. Uh, first, first clue was uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go on. Know? The initial was R. Yeah. Right. That was that was razor light. All right. Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah. Light. Okay. Kind of works. Yeah, Second didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very sure. specific. Uh, I mind. Go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, that key in, key in, key in. That's the. That's awful. Word that doesn't count. Key in. Right. It's keen. It's yeah, keen. It's keen. This one's right. a awful. Uh, awful, one, awful, awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that, the initial I was C, that was Caesars. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Who's three. I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people That's did. terrible. Okay, Caesars. who was the first one? Who I don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers, right? I know. Go on then. I mean, <laughs> horrific. But anyway, we're gonna give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big prize, the big prizes in, uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where done Paul in Bookham, but also he does get, um, the, uh, complete series of, uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, That Rock Gods album. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good for open water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a court smacking a bald man yeah. on the bumps mm. really hard. Go on. XFM 104.9 playing Green Day. Uh, the studio's falling apart. I know, his microphone broke. I'm mine broke. Rick, I don't know why, uh, Lindauer's, the sparkling wine, <laughs> want to be associated with this shambles of a show. It is falling apart. This is awful, this studio. It's got to be fixed. Right? Right, now, Carl, come on, dear. It's the time where I'm gonna let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, let's That'll be available on the website next week. RickyGervais.com. So see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm -hmm. But we'll take that. He's <laughs> taking. Let's get the camera ready. Get the camera ready. Ready. So if you just joined us, um, we are yeah. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to 
basically, well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang on, hang on a sec. Let me just put the headphones on. Right, film this then. Okay. <laughs> it's in position, look. Just firing right. up. Okay, Carl, Carl, come on there so we can see your head a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... Like, oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! <laughs> It's like, it's like jackass. <laughs> did it hurt? Me. What do you mean, did it hurt you? I sort of just... I... It, I went off, it went off course, did it? Just glanced, did it? Right, Lindauer, is you going to send us, um, eight more bottles, please? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get this right. <laughs> Homesick. Kings of Convenience. Beautiful. Yeah. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly the end of our first of six shows, our summertime special. Some of, the, some of the highlights, Rick, so far today. I don't know what you've made of it. We, we Finger up the arse. Finger up the arse. Testicles early on. Uh, um, Orient don't age very well. Bit, Kent, bit of racism. Bit of racism with the, uh, Germany's full of cants. Yeah, that, that was a That isn't swearing. Um, um, cork. Cork on the air. Champagne down the electrical <laughs> works. <laughs> Yeah. So good. Just to, the, the finale is, uh, it's monkey news, obviously. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news, yeah. Well, there isn't, uh, I've been away, haven't I? Oh. <laughs> right, there's been no monkey news, you can't get- No, no, but I haven't had, had a proper chance to sort of, you know, uh, Carl, your monkey news is of spurious tales from the 17th century sometimes. <laughs> so let's have one of those. No, it's let's have a monkey that, who dressed as Zorro and they thought he was uh, a woodsman, but when they took his head off, he was only he was a four foot hairy chimp. <laughs> let's have one of those ridiculous stories. Well, we've we've done that though. But uh, do you want to go back on some of the ones? Oh, for just recap? what is the yeah, monkey well. news? There must have been some monkey news this right. week. The only thing that sort of stood out, do you know, like, they're having problems- You're just making this up! Where's your information? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the document? What is this? Because I've been away, so I haven't got anything right, let's just hit, let's, let's, let's But let's it's hear bad it enough out. when he's reading it he gets it wrong. When he's just riffing, it's gonna be absolute twaddle. Let's hear it out. Right, do you know, like, they're having problems getting you, new, um, people to be policemen? Oh, for <laughs> Go on. They've, uh, in America- they're taking them on to, uh, sort of join the SWAT team. <laughs> They've taken what on? Some little monkeys. Okay. Uh, giving them walkie talkies and all that. And, uh. Well, they can't talk. <laughs> They're just walkies. Did I? <laughs> yeah, giving them some walkies. What do you no, mean? What, what was. They've given commands and that. And, uh, they Well, so it's one way. They, they tell them they've got the little thing well, strapped to them. They're good at, like, Getting into small, of some sort of, you know, small places and that, and sort of, you know, cracking stuff and all that. Like I say, it's just half a story I just picked up on. That's not a story. Well, what do you want? Monkey news. Well, I'll, I'll get some better stuff next week, but I've literally like got off a plane. This is the ago. worst. Uh, this is one of the worst shows we've ever done. And that's saying something, Rick. This is- We've done some tripe. <laughs> this is nothing. And to end with the- the police in America have given monkeys walkie-talkies, that's nothing. That is a disgrace. And what do you mean that you've not had enough time to prepare? We've been off air for 18 months. Yeah. yeah what, there's been no accumulated monkey news in that time? It's gotta keep it fresh though, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Great one. Well, Coldplay. Speed of sound. Steve, I know you, uh, like an insight to my, um, musical taste. Always. Right? But that's my favourite Coldplay track of all time. I just thought I'd, uh, just throw that in. Not a fan of clocks? Uh, no, I think I, I've uh, overplayed uh, Parachutes a little bit and, uh, but, uh, so that's my favourite one. I like it. I'm, uh, I'm afraid to say I'm a bit of a Philistine when it comes to Coldplay. That sounds the same as all the other ones. I'm sorry to say. Oh. Yeah. You'll have to meet these boys one day. <laughs> Yeah, and they say- I'll turn to their face, I don't care. A little bit rock and roll. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm Ricky Gervais. A little, uh, funny little words all type voice over there is Stephen Merchant. And with us are producer Carl Pilkington. Alright? Alright. Whenever we say producer, of course, that is in inverted commas. Yeah. Done with the fingers. Well, he, uh, he didn't have it. I wanted to play some off my iPod today to record it because they didn't have it here. Uh, it's a great track called Anthony and the Johnsons. He didn't even have the lead. He went, right, it's difficult. And he, and he went, is it any good? I went, yeah, it's really good. He went, well, why haven't we got it here already then? Oh! Oh, that's the, yeah, that's the paradigm, is it? If X-Man hasn't got it, it's no good. Four non-blondes doing well, is it? That's still in the cupboard, is it? 
Unbelievable. We're a little bit annoyed today, aren't we, actually? I'm really annoyed. Yeah. All that stuff we did last week, um, uh, uh, that Landau sent us some sparkling wine, and we thought, right, we're- well, you shamelessly plugged it. Yeah. How many times did you mentioned it? Like twenty it times. Twenty times. We we uh, well, the finale was hitting Carl on the head with a cork. That's on the website, by the way. Okay. RickyGervais dot com. Go there and see Carl being hit in the head with a cork. Right. Yeah. We and we said, look, send us free stuff. We will talk about it. Nothing. The 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 the. I mean, literally is nothing. Empty. The cupboard is bare. No one has thought. I tell you what. There's the, there's there's those guys from the office. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean let's be honest, Rick. We are taste makers. We're yeah. opinion formers, you and yeah. I. Yeah. And you'd have, you'd have thought if anyone was going to send us some free stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it makes me fume. And we, do you know what it is? It's right. because people, PR people and that, they've realised no one's listening. But not only are we going against all our principles and losing our dignity just for some free stuff. And integrity. And integrity, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're what? going against excellent policy because obviously they would have got thousands of pounds for Landauer to be mentioned <laughs> last <laughs> week. On, 20 right. times. No, it wouldn't have. It's 40 quid. It's 40 quid. for a, 40 quid for a nine minute advert. <laughs> so advertise your quality stuff here. Yeah. Jeff's garage, s cheaper than some other garages. <laughs> uh, uh, we do. We, uh, anyway, uh, uh, actually, did so we play an advert once for a tattoo parlor? <laughs> yeah, do you remember that? I'm sure we played an advert for a tattoo <laughs> parlor. What, who can, what tattoo parlor can afford to advertise on a radio station? Unless it's a tin pot one like this. Oh God! Oh, I've got good some good music today, though, Steve. Oh, really? I hope so. I'll be the judge of that. Go yeah, on. Well, 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 ACDC. Oh. Have you got a bit of, uh, bare skin you need, uh, colouring in? Come along to, uh, Ron's bike shop and tattoo parlour. He'll write mum on your hand and give you Harley a tune-up while you wait. I can't believe no one wants to advertise with us. And that only costs, what, 20 quid? Yeah. And they play that I mean, I turned down millions of pounds to do adverts because I think it's beneath me. I thought, and I thought last week I'll give a little bit back. I'll give, I'll excite all these people who want to get a bit, they, Nothing. all I'm thinking is, Steve, either we, our cash rate's gone down, no one wants us anymore, mm -hmm. right, which is impossible, surely. I would have thought so. Or, we're on a tin pot station that no one listens to. Now- Ding! <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm having to hold on the pop shield of this mic because it keeps falling off. It's embarrassing. It's, it's awful. Really embarrassing. I mean, uh, oh, God. Well, Carl, what, what are your thoughts? Why have you stuck it out here? Uh, nothing better coming in on Well, I'll tell you right, why, because you're always on holiday. You don't do a lot. You get paid, you know, well, didn't he, really? He's a moany. I don't know, I mean, he doesn't try and get on at all. He doesn't deal with people. He moans about everything. And, uh, you know, so he's. I'm alright. I've got my own little room and that. Yeah. <laughs> like a cage. It is like a cage, isn't it? And he can shut the door, shut the door. If people walk by, he shut the door. He doesn't want to look in. He's like a, he's like a miserable old chimp. Did you, we notice today how much he at, he's Simeon, isn't he's he? He's very strange, actually. Um, we maybe should try and get a picture on the website because Carl's arms. Are particularly chimp like. <laughs> it's very, they really very Because he's got that sort of, he's got long downy hair. It's and not the like. long extended knuckles. Yeah, yeah. And his totally round face that sort of the chin goes back and the, uh, the dome of his cranium. I think, quite seriously, I, I know we sort of share about 98.5% of our genetic material with um, uh, bonobos and chimpanzees, but I think he's got a little bit more. Yeah. I, j I honestly think he's a little bit of a throwback. Just his line, they just kept to this sort of really the ugliest one in the cave yeah. and the tree and he really didn't he didn't come out of it. I'm not saying you are you know, I mean I don't think you well you are. Yeah, you're chimp like. No, it does it does annoy me my air annoys me on my body and that. Because i have got I've got like air on me on my little toes and that. Have you? And on the legs. Uh, would you like, see near your little toes, can you pick things up with them? No, that's right. Okay. Well, that's that's, that's the finale of this week's show. <laughs> We're going to yeah. see if he can play a record and put the fader up. From a tire. <laughs> while yeah, swinging on a tire. Just using his, to his hairy toes. Yeah. I've sort of got air all the way, but then it just runs out where it should be. On the I know. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Just, do you, is this part of the reason why you're always uncomfortable about, you know, being nude or around na naked people? Uh, is that part of the reason, do you think? Because you look so grotesque? Well, when I'm on holiday, I don't really like wandering about without a top on unless, like, it's a quiet beach or whatever. Sure. So what would you normally wear? Shirt I just have like a nice sort of light, summery, sort of linen shirt maybe, just yeah. a few top buttons open. Yeah. But I don't, I, yeah, I don't like, the naked body isn't that nice anyway, is it? You know what I mean? It, whatever it is, if you're a cat and you shave, you don't look that nice. 
you know what I mean? But I, mean, I think you'll find a cat is naked even with its fur on. The cats don't wear clothes. No, but what I mean is, a, right. bald, a bald cat isn't that good. You know, you no. know it does me head in that I'm bald. I'm not, you know, I wish, if I could have hair, it would be nice, but that's like- Would you prefer nice. animals to wear clothes like Mickey Mouse does? <laughs> <laughs> Or goofy. You know what I don't like? Edith and all that, we've done it. But don't you think sometimes you could sort of like, maybe, uh, um, I don't know, fancify a, a little bit? Like, um, if, if there was such a thing as a, an ape, um, salon, and there isn't, Carl, <laughs> there isn't, right? Um, would you, you know, give a orangutan a, a trim, maybe start with there? Cause some of those look like they're going bald, but they've got a comb should, over, they don't should they? just have a shave. <laughs> <laughs> when it's like that. That's what I did. Take it back. <laughs> and the underarms as well. Yeah, they, they've really got a lot of underarm hair. Um, even the women ones. Really? Yeah. That's disgusting. I know. I don't know. I don't even know where they breed. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how they get they laid some of those horrible old, uh, hairy <laughs> ginger orangutans. <laughs> yeah, they are particularly grim, some of those. I know, yeah. The big ones. I know. Ginger yeah. ones. Yeah. <laughs> they can't be happy, can they? What is that? What, why is. Where did that happen, the, the ginger thing? Why do people give them, like, hard time and that? Well, you just gave them a hard time then, so why did you do it? You no, were just flying in, were you, to people, a... people do sort of give... I, I, don't, I don't understand why, but ginger people get quite a bit of stick and I, I've never understood it. No, I was doing it, it's just, I don't know why. I they don't do know. They do not they? I don't know, it might be historical, it might have been because... I, I, I'm sure they don't everywhere in the world, I'm sure it's probably... No, they are, yeah, they're always... I've, I've said to you about even, like, ginger cats are always fat because they... You sort of sick of it, probably. Oh, play a record! Wait, 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 wait. Ginger cats, what do you well, mean they're sick of it? Well, when you see a ginger cat. They've been eating, like, because yeah, they're upset. They're fed up and they've been You never things. see, like, a thin, happy ginger cat running about. He's always overweight and looking a bit fed up. It's just a good point, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a good point, Carl. It's a point. So, last week, the Chinese don't age well. Now, anything ginger, including cats, yeah. no, are no. sick of it. No, but I'm just saying- Are I, you I ginger? Don't... Would you like to take issue with any of uh, Carl's points? 83 XFM is a text, you can text us, maybe you've got- maybe you've seen a thin ginger I'm not, cat. I'm not having a go, though. That's what I'm saying, I'm just saying it's weird how, how people give him hard time. And it's- uh, if I could have air, I'd go for ginger air rather than being bald. Really? Mm. <laughs> from Ben Folds on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Had a fax. Mm -hmm. Never mind champagne and freebies like that. Just forget that. We're not doing that anymore. It didn't work, okay? But we are still in demand. Got a fax here, right? Uh, so guy says, I produce a program for the BAS scientists, right? Wintering in Antarctica. Now, what this bloke is saying is, there are scientists, right? Um, researching in Antarctica, and they're soon, they're already locked away and sort of like out of touch because they can't get to them, right? But they're soon going to be living in 24 hour darkness because through midsummer here, it's, it's darkness for 24 hours for like three months, and Jeez. they're totally cut off. And he's trying to get some stuff together, and he wants us to record a message. And it said, um, uh, every year, um, uh, they, they choose a celebrity to do something, a message, uh, uh, of, uh, of their choice. They had Rolf Harris, David Attenborough, Jonathan Ross. This year, Ricky is the popular choice. Mm -hmm. So, I'm up there with Rolf Harris, David Attenborough and Jonathan Ross. In, in terms of the vote amongst some scientists stuck in a hut <laughs> in Antarctica for three months. I think so, they've just, they've just got cabin fever. So that's they've another poll, so that's another poll I've won. <laughs> Uh, a British <laughs> Antarctic scientist in a hut pile. If I was trapped in a little room with <laughs> several other men for three months of pitch oh, darkness, oh, I, sexist, for, or, or indeed women. Yeah, I can't imagine why I'd ever want a message from Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> why would Rolf? I mean, that David Attenborough, fascinating. Well, I assume it is the si it's the it's the animal. That I, I assume they're researching penguins or something, aren't they? If they're still there, or maybe but what's seismic activity, or maybe polar uh, uh, shift. I don't know. Possibly if you were researching kangaroos. Yeah. Oh, well, he, knows, he knows about all animals, doesn't he? You can take him a budgie with a broken wing and he'll sort it out. Or he knows a man who does. Sure. He can, you know, he'll, he'll sort that out for you. And they do a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, while yeah. you wait. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, I thought they want a five minute message. We can do better than that. Let's dedicate the whole show to them, Steve. We can what? 
dedicate the whole show to them. What was it, trouble with my diction? A little bit. I'm just thinking again, you know, we've got to slow down because <laughs> these guys are there, they're, they're working, they're busy. They're used to, uh, speaking eloquent yeah, <laughs> English. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're used to talking to intelligent, yeah, educated people. Yeah. So Carl should be something of a surprise <laughs> to them. I imagine they'll just flood back early and come back to study him. <laughs> So, this is, uh, this, this show is dedicated to all you sign- I know nothing about them, I don't know how many there are, I know they're just, as I say, in a hut somewhere, presumably with a laptop, drinking, uh, hot chocolate out of steel mugs with- <laughs> Just looking up porn. <laughs> <laughs> they're not yeah. on the internet, are they? Oh, are they not? Well, no, there's no the phone laptop. line. Well, well how do they charge up the laptop when it runs out? Well, they've probably got generators. They must have other stuff. They've they, they got Italian now, haven't they? Of course they have No, for DVDs and things. Well, they could probably, yeah, they could probably have a, uh, a DVD player that, that would run off a generator and stuff. So they can play, I don't know what we're giving this on, CD or something. Mm -hmm. But, um... Mm. And what are they... What, how can that enhance your life, though? That you, like, two months has gone, you've sat there, you, you, you're chewing, um, Kendall Mint cake and, uh, uh and just looking round at white walls, right, thinking that the thing's gonna come in any minute and put you out of your misery, <laughs> yeah. right, and you go, all right, lads, it's here, what? A five minute message from Ricky Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Who? The, uh, fellow from the office? <laughs> oh, yeah. Go on. I mean, so, yeah. I don't know how I can enhance. I mean, I, I get voted, into that. One of them's going, I voted for Ricky Martin, I, <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I don't understand, um, what they're researching. You say penguins, but that's just a hypothesis. Well, they're assuming that, cause it's Antarctica. Where, where the, uh, the penguins live. Is there anything else there? What else is going on? Well, there's presumably climate differences and Well, yeah, cause it's a, it's, it's a land well. mass, isn't it? Arctic's just on ice and Antarctica is actually a continent, it's a land mass, so there's stuff there. But presumably not in the winter. I imagine it's like ten foot of snow and really not a lot happening. Sure. I don't know what they're researching, they could be, it could be, uh, uh, uh uh, astronomy, as I say, it could be some sort of seismic thing, it could be just testing polar melting, it could be, it could be penguins, I, I've no idea. I haven't got the information. Uh, I, I don't think I want us to go into what they're doing. <laughs> they, they already know, yeah. They probably want to know what's happening in the world for, oh. Well, we, we've got the man here. That's an interminable five minutes for them. They've already, we've already wasted <laughs> that five minutes. <laughs> 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 they're gonna put it all excited to hear from you, and they've just got five minutes of us discussing on, what though, they might be doing. What I'm worried about is this, it's like, well, for these, for these ten people there, we've just annoyed the two hundred listeners we've got. <laughs> Because they're thinking, what's in this for me? <laughs> well, we'll have fun along the way, and what I think we're doing, they, they've been stuck there, as I say, they're out of touch, they don't know what's happening, so Carl Pilkington is the man, um, uh, we're gonna have a break, we'll have a song, maybe some ad breaks, and then Carl is gonna let these scientists who are stuck away in the darkness know what's been happening for the last couple of weeks. Is that alright, Carl? Well, I, you know, I don't really follow the news, so oh, I don't play a record. record. I was gonna say what's been going on. <laughs> 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 Embrace a glorious day. Well, it is a glorious day, Steve. Brilliant. Every day's a glorious day, isn't it? Well, it is when I'm with you. Yeah, love the world. Yeah. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness. Um, let's tell them what they've been missing. What's the highlights, Carl, of the last, um, Ricky Gervais and Steve Merchant and Carl Pilton, by the way, XFM 104.9, um, etc. What's, what have they missed for the last, uh, just, just do the last few weeks. What have they missed? Remember, they haven't got newspapers, they haven't got telly. What, what's the- look at him, he's looking at me like I just said that in Arabic. <laughs> what, what do you understand? Think what, what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on, on the news and that, what's, what's gone on in the world and that. Y yeah. Uh. Well, or just things you've done personally, I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. <sighs> Pope's dead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, li I like it. Oh, I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. like they're listening and you go, what's happened? Pope, the Pope's dead. <laughs> well, don't say like that. Break it to us gently, Carl. Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it and it pa you panic a bit when it's a breaking news and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go, Pope's dead and you go, well. So you've just used that old. short, sharp tactic. Who, oh, yeah. Softly, like ripping the pants off quickly. It, I just said it softly, no. Pope's dead. <laughs> Mm. When you were, you know all that coverage of the Pope with like those millions of people that had gathered in you know in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about you remember we talked about the Queen Mother mm. and they were queuing up queuing up queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, like on stage. four hours and to get a glimpse. And once again, I couldn't help but feel if they popped on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled them past <laughs> everyone else, they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. 
Yeah. You know, once again, people not thinking. They're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah, like me. Well, like students and ragweed exactly. with a, with a bed down on the street. novelty beds. They're all dressed in kind of cardinal's gear. Yeah. Just, you know, trundling them off and down the, yes. But it's the, way, it's, it's the way they also said they've now got a new pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being key. <laughs> 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 So, who have we offended? I no, mean, it, 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 the thing is, it's no, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about, about friends, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Sam and Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm though. Not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good yeah. that you can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah, why <laughs> couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I mean, he goes there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why, <laughs> if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, right. and we've, we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like Raffles, area. though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, it's, what's it, 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 don't people put, let's put this in context. You know, he's not, he's not a villain, but sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was, where they live now, they've retired, right? They've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? And it's so quiet- <laughs> Isn't that a witness re- uh, <laughs> relocation <laughs> protection scheme? <laughs> but because- because there's only about eight people living in this village, it's not worth, like, the- the-, the like, corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in this village? It's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. So, uh, <laughs> So anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you meant to call up and go, all right, Harry, uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop, and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look mm. at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village, <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, do you know what I mean? It seems, in Manchester you can probably get away with this, there's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you've got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's stopped doing it now, Has he? Stopped doing it, yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good, alright, so with the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that, uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot-long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Them, they're gonna think that the world's been taken over by them. It's like, well, it's well, never done it. We're not going back, there's a foot long spider on the loose. Are these people bright though? You, well, let's have a look. Antarctic scientists. Yeah, yeah, they've probably got an O level yeah, or two. They're looking at penguins all day. Yeah. I, so how bright have you got to be? What do you mean? Well, what are they doing? Well, I don't know, do I? But they've been chosen. This probably cost millions of pounds to set them up there. They're pro- yeah, they're, they're pro- oh, Carl. This, I'd say this is like, for scientists, this is like Big Brother. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is like a big dinner scientist there, watching yeah. this, finding That's out what's gonna go on, there's little challenges that they give them, little time. It's like Celebrity Love Island without the sun and slappers. Mm. Go on. I think, what else? What else has gone on? Well, while you're thinking, Carl, I should just tell you, now, you threw that question out earlier, um, why are ginger people historically mocked? Mm. We've had a couple of responses on the text, 83XFM. I, again, as ever with XFM listeners, don't believe what they say, don't trust what they say. But mm. one of them, um... Have we got any respect for anyone in the world? Um, <laughs> get back to you. Uh, Pete in Tooting, now, again, I think this is nonsense, he claims that the reason ginger people are disliked is because Judas was ginger from the Bible. How- I don't know where he's come up with this idea. No, uh, I've heard that. But sh- I mean, are there a great many people from, you know, the Middle East who are ginger? Well, that's probably why he stood out. Sure. What and he's pro- he was probably fed up and he thought, I'll get him back. Yeah. Maybe- Unless he was wearing- unless he <laughs> had his hair dyed ginger when he was on the witness protection scheme. <laughs> what which did he do? he had to go into what, after what, it all came out in the book. What did he do? What's- what did he do? He stitched, up, he stitched him up, didn't he, to the Romans, didn't he, Judas? Didn't he do it for 40 pieces of silver or something? I'm, I'm not big on the Bible, but apparently, um... Incidentally, if you'd like us to, uh, stitch up any kind of messiahs for 40 pieces <laughs> of silver, just get in touch, 83XFM, uh, we're willing to do that for you as well. Um, but, so that's, so that's one, one explanation. There's another one here which is, uh, again, I don't believe this for a moment. It says here, ginger people get a lot of stick, because in, El- in Elizabethan times, people with ginger hair were told that their mother had slept with the devil. 
and that was why their hair was their hair was ginger. So there's two options. Maybe if you've got some more, you can uh, any more spurious thoughts, then get in touch. Uh, 83XFM. But yeah, I don't know. So, I, no, 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 it might be true for both of those. I mean, the tr the point is that if only those are true, they will already be picked on. If you know what I mean. Right. That's the point. Mm. It, it's mm. sort of like I, 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 maybe that's not the the the, uh, the total root of it. Well, the Judas thing might be the root of it. The first big um, ginger to. Uh, do some uh, uh, a little bit. So if off. he was bald, then old bald people would be like, "Yeah, get our time on that." Yeah. Well, we do mock you behind your back anyway, Carl. Don't, yeah. That's going on. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. uh, so t t play a record and think of something that's happened to tell these poor scientists what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. All you've come up with so far is the Pope's dead and there's a big spider. What is that? that eats chicken. <laughs> the Pope's rainy night in Soho. Uh, I hope I hope there isn't a rainy night in Soho tonight, Rick. Right. You're one of those uh, who agrees with me. <laughs> so we just had a, uh, an email here from a guy called James Lee. He says, uh, "Hi, just writing a bit of info on the scientists in Antarctica. I'm a scientist who's just come back from one of the Antarctic bases called Halley uh, or Haley. There are 15 people staying there over the Antarctic winter. The scientists are looking mainly at the atmosphere, things like the ozone hole and meteorology. Right. I think there are six scientists staying over the winter, as well as a doctor." Electrician, mechanic, and a carpenter, and so on. And so he's saying uh, they do listen. They can. They have the internet, so they maybe could listen uh, to the show on the internet. And uh, if you get the chance, say hi to Francis, and the rest of the winter is for me. Uh, sure, no problem. Yeah, thanks, James. Um, but yeah, there they are. That's what they're doing. That's what they're up to. But, but why? Why are they asking you for a message though? When I mean, have, have these people got families and that, or are they convicts? Or <laughs> 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 no, which of course they got. But they probably do get messages from their family. <laughs> well, what, why are you doing one for one? Is that, I mean, say, do you know, like, you see it in, like, porridge and stuff like that, where if someone's in prison and no one visits them, yeah. and they sort of look a bit fed up and that, is this message that you're doing for, for like, people who d don't get a letter in the post from- Brilliant. So they, they put this on the shelf until someone doesn't get one. All right, Hargreaves? Yes, sir, I didn't get a message today, sir. <laughs> you have got a message, Hargreaves. I've what, sir? Hargreaves, you have got a message. Really, sir? From Ricky Gervais. <laughs> really, sir? And I give it- Don't talk. <laughs> Don't talk. Please, there are scientists listening. Try to d keep the talking shit down to a minimum today. Yeah, what, what's annoying me is, eh, uh, right, they, they're saying they stuck over there for months. But it yes. seems to me like they're wasting a lot of time. Right? Why? Well, you're saying they probably watch DVDs. They're saying they've got internet access. Yeah. Yeah? They're well, I'm wrong. To, listening to messages. Yeah. Get the job done and go home. Well, that's so, well, then we don't have to tell them anything then, because they, they listen to the internet. They've got, if they've got the internet, then, yeah, it's a waste of time. Good point. Play a record. Well, hang on, before that, here's a good point. You've had long time to research what's been going on in the world. We just had an email here from Nicholas who says, why haven't you told them about the recent pig Olympics that just went on in China? You've missed that one, Carl, once again. Who won? <laughs> First of the game to die, Morrissey, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, you failed miserably. The scientists stuck away. Right, one more chance. What what's happened in the last couple of weeks? Just one more chance to. What have you seen in the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, like I said, I don't I don't really watch the news and that, so right. I can't uh, tell them about that. But in a way, I think they're better off not knowing. I think that's the only good thing about being out there, isn't it? Not knowing about the bad stuff going on. Yeah. So. I can't help them there. They don't need to look at the weather, do they? No, not enough. No. But, uh, I'll tell you about the Pope and that. Yeah, it's mm. pretty extensive. What uh, about the, uh, the EU constitution and the, uh, the no votes? What, uh, what do you make of that? Uh, what are your views? What, what's the problem there? Oh, this, this isn't, this no, isn't, better, this isn't broadcasting though, is it? This is nothing. Come up with something. Well, the Talk! Fact, the fat baby then, the fat baby that they found, that was on the telly. Right. Well, what was that? It's just a little fat baby. That, uh, uh, oh, for f I don't know what, it's just a, just a little fat kid and that. What? Tell what? It what was on the telly, it was on the telly and but that. But what was on the telly? You just said fat baby, fat baby, fat baby, fat baby on telly, fat baby on telly. Do you meant to be telling them what's happened in the world? Tell, well, tell me about the fat baby on telly. It's just, they've found some, uh, there's, there's this illness called Momo. Right, and uh, they've just got this, this woman had a kid, it's really sad, it was on Channel 4 and that, right, and uh, kids born. Are you sure it wasn't Jimmy Carr? Kids born and that, right. Momo? It's called Momo, Isn't that yeah. a Black Music Award? 
<laughs> no, right, little, little fat baby and that, and, uh, there's only three of them in the world. These little fat babies. Right. And, uh, so one they're, of them- they're How fat? Are you not telling- what, what do you mean? How fat are they? Six stone it was, it was only two. And, uh, th there's, there's three of them in the world, and there was this one, and there was one in Brazil. Are they, like, and, uh, endangered? Is that the problem? Because <laughs> there's only three of them in the world. I don't I'll be worried. Is it like a conservation campaign? They're hunted for their flesh. No, it's just sad. <laughs> if you I know. It's just sad. But, 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 but if you you've seen it, you're going It's a bit, bit sad than that. Um, well, I haven't seen it and I know nothing about it. Well, I've told you, there's three of them in the world. I d I st uh, okay, what else was on telly? Uh, the, uh, something I watched the other night, that was good. Uh, again, you know how I learn stuff from the- from the telly, I don't watch the news. Yeah, well you don't around. learn stuff from the telly, yeah, yeah, you, you, what, though, you told us there's a fat baby well, in the world. Forget about them there's in- There's a spider- there's a spider at his chickens and there was a fat kid, that's- Alright, forget them in Iceland, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll give them rockbusters later to do, right? <laughs> Iceland! But, um, but what's her name? I'll tell you what is interesting, Steve. What? Um, I didn't know that much about it. O autism. Okay. Oh, good. There's some more entertaining stuff on XFM 104.9. No, no. It's a cheer up, people. Go on in. What? What? Come on. No, right. Have you heard about it, Steve? What autism. It, is? Uh, it, autism. it scares me to death when he comes up, when he touches on a serious subject. It, uh, we've been talking about wheeling a dead pope round, the Chinese don't age well, and ginger people are hated, and now we're gonna that. touch on a really- I mean, no, I said, uh, uh, my heart's in my throat. Go yeah, on, Carl, said, then. Tell me- tell me your lady. insights to autism. Right, well, it, there's this- it, again, Channel 4 coming up with some good stuff at the moment, right? It might have been Channel 5. Um, <laughs> But what's the name? It was- It's the attention span I like! Uh, it's these- these people who, uh, they've got, got like this autism thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, they sort of take in a lot of information, they get sort of a bit- they get so into it that they know everything about that subject and what have you, right? And there was this lad who, uh, he knew everything, right, about EastEnders. Right. He sort of- the, the cameraman was saying to him, uh, so, you know, why- why he standards and that? I said, oh, I don't know, I just like it. And he said, uh, I remember when I first watched it, it was a Thursday, it was five to eight, Pauline Fowler walked in, she had a pink jumper on, she said, all right, love. And he remembers everything from that moment on. Yeah. Right, and everything. Which is great, but then, the way the programme was making out, it was almost like they were saying it's- it's a disability. <laughs> right. When in a way, it's more like a superpower. Sure. Like- like Rain Man. <laughs> well, if, you, if, you, if you can take it's him- It's Rain Man. No, I'm he not- He has special autistic powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, We were sent- we were sent for Rain Man. I, I don't know what to do! Well, so I don't you know mean, what to do! So he would be a great intentional mastermind, sort of autistic so it, mastermind. He'd well, be dynamite. Well, what I'm like. saying is, don't be watching EastEnders though, sort of, why didn't they give him an encyclopedia and say, get into that? Sure. That'll be useful. Yeah. Keep him away from EastEnders. Wasting his time there. But I don't think it's a- it is a disability. No. Yeah, well, there, there are other things, and they're, they're not. Uh, it's, it's also autism is a matter of degrees. From what I know, uh, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but I feel that I have to at least be the voice of reason, as as ill-educated as I am on the subject. But I think one, there's degrees of autism. I think some are higher performance than others. There's other there's other issues with it. It's not they just they just got good memories. They don't go around doing tricks for people because they can remember stuff. There are other there are other issues with it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, they did- they seemed a bit- But you watched the programme! What did you learn? That he knows when Pauline Fowler came in! Yeah, I mean, there was other bits where they couldn't control her emotions and stuff. Oh! But, but that but, other- that other little bit, yeah. But the main- the main bit of it was he can soak up information and stuff, and I'm just saying it didn't seem really bad. Do you know what I mean? There's disabilities where people say that's a bad disability. Go it's on. like how people say about, uh, this is brilliant. Know. This is just like uh, I, I. This is amazing to be in a room with this man. It's incredible. You just wind him up and listen to what comes out. And no, I'm, I'm going to sit back it's now. It's I'm not going to even. I'm not going to defend you no, no. or explain anything. Just tell me. Go on and tell me about the other disabilities no, what, that are worse. What, what, no, what I mean is how people c can sometimes easily get mixed up. Um, how people are scared of like a cyclop. <laughs> when at the end of the day, he's got a disability. <laughs> I bloke with. I bloke Who's with scared of a cyclop? No, it's Apart just from Jason and his Argonauts. <laughs> where have you, where, where's this cyclop that you're scared of? No, I'm just saying in history and in books and that. No, 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 not in history. Hi, hi, history happened. Yeah. 
Barbara's what are you thinking of? You're, you're mixing history with Greek mythology and Roman mythology and every other type of mythology. Well, what do you mean? There wasn't really a giant cyclop that went round picking up ships and throwing them around. That's not history, Carl. Do you think Batman's history? <laughs> no, but this was, uh, it was ages ago, wasn't it, when we were sort of falling No, I'm not saying thing. it didn't happen ages ago, I'm saying it didn't happen. Well, it might have done. There's no, I mean, what's so ridiculous about a fellow with one eye? In the middle of his head, and he's big and scary and lives in a cave. Why is he scary? Because he's got, what, if he had eight eyes, I'd be scared of him. <laughs> At the end of the day, he's got a dis- uh, oh, we'll talk about him a bit. <laughs> Bobby Womack, across 110th Street, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant, and over there, Carl Pilkington. Can I just remind people that- A man so stupid, it isn't actually offensive. Mm. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, no, I just wanted to remind people that they can get in touch, uh, on the text, <laughs> 83XFM. You'll need that, uh, text number shortly, because we're gonna be playing Rockbusters very soon. Um, Gav has texted it, texted in, and he says quite simply, What's happened to the webcam? All I can see is a bold monkey. <laughs> um, well- <laughs> You're absolutely right, we'll try and get that sorted out for you. <laughs> but, uh, we're rock- we're rock busting now. We do it now. Should we do it now? Say it up now. Okay, great. Yeah. So we'll just- You well, should well, just remind people, Rick, for, uh, particularly if they're trapped in Antarctica for the next- Well- That's what this game is. Well, this is, um, uh, um, blockbusters, um, just totally ripped off and, um, the clues are bands and artists. Um, they- Carl says they're cryptic clues, they're not cryptic clues, they're more like what word am I thinking of. They're tenuous, um, some of them don't work at all. Mm. Um, so it's- it's really are you in tune with a shaved monkey? I mean, it's nearly embarrassing to get the clue. I pride myself on that I don't really get them. And I, I'm, I'm sort of proud of that, because you shouldn't. Yeah. But anyway, I've, I think I've given it a, a big sell. Yeah. Now, you do win tat today, but the big prize is going forward to be in the draw in, um, five weeks' time, when there's a, a signed, uh, Homer that I uh, got Matt, uh, Grain to draw. If you go to rickygervais.com, you can see him drawing it. It's an original. Well, uh, if they want to see it, they can go to xfm.co.uk slash ricky, and it's actually- just click on it, you can have a look at it. Oh, you can see all the pictures there, can't you? There's also a signed, um, Nigel Tufnell, um, poster, uh, and, uh, us three as, um, flanimals. But there's a little, actually, video clip, uh, as on rickysarrays.com, oh, mm. you can actually see Matt Groening, um, uh, drawing it. Well, so those, those prizes are the ones, that, the big prizes you can win in five weeks' time when you, if you get to the grand final. In the meantime, uh, it's the usual selection of mediocre gifts which will be given away. That you've found in a draw that people have sent us yeah, to give so away. Yeah, so first up we've got, uh, the, um, I think, J well, I think most people agree, the mediocre John Travolta film Ladder 49, which I think right. barely made it into cinemas over here. No. Uh, we've also oh, got on DVD. And, that, what were you, and we're giving that away. <laughs> we're giving that away. Brilliant. On DVD, oh. uh, the TV series Grumpy Old Men, which I think is repeated every <laughs> single night on BBC Two. Oh! And, uh, and, and, and and that's free as well, is it? Yeah, oh, that's free. Oh, well. okay. That's free well. right. uh, we've got the complete third series of Alias. Great gift, um, only if you've seen the previous two seasons. So, um, <laughs> is that the one I'm in? Mean? I don't know. Possibly. Uh, French and Saunders at the movies, a collection mm. of all their hilarious movie mm. spoofs. Um, again, on television, I think every Friday, and uh, the TV series Operation Good Guys. You know, fine series, but you could see that on UK Gold most nights. So, so um, <laughs> once again, an excellent. But of if you win all those and take them straight down to Record and Tape Exchange, you will be able to get two albums that you actually like. That's exactly right. So. Well, People send us then, so they sort of get bigged up on the radio. So that's done. We don't need to worry <laughs> about that. Yeah, angry. So uh, anyway, then three <laughs> three clues. Well, hang on, that. let's play the jingle. No, I haven't got one. Have you not got a jingle for Rockbusters? No, oh, do one quickly now. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Rockbusters. Brilliant. All right. So we got we got three of them. Uh, cryptic clue and the initials. The band. It could be a band or an artist. We've done all that, haven't we? Yeah. All right. First one. Uh, the fella oh, for f let his wife know how he got the bruise on his leg. Right? Give us that again. The fella let his wife know how he, how he got the bruise on the leg. He got a little bruise. Hey, yeah, it's, it's all, uh, imagine it's that in the Times crossword. You read it again, it's slightly different. Every time I look back at this crossword, it's slightly different. All the words change. The it initials, can't be cryptic. The initials there, C L. Right? C L. Fella got a bruise on his leg. He let his wife know how he got it. What's going on? Right, <laughs> Yeah. All the muttering! And Se what's the next, uh, second one. clue? <laughs> second one. That, uh, that Potter lad had, uh, a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards and that, right? He had a lot of bottle playing with the wizards and that. What's, what's all that about? <laughs> right? I love it! He always says, what's all that about? TB there. Band or artist, the initials TB. That Potter lad, he's got a lot of bottle doing all that stuff with the wizards, right? And the, uh, the third one, 
the Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. Oh. What, <laughs> what do they need, right? The mm. Buddhists won't be able to get in their temple without these. The initials TM. Right. 83936 is the text number. Um, we don't want to receive emails from this because we can't be bothered, so just a quick text. Yes, Make sure you include, uh, all three answers. We're not interested in this. You've only got, you need, you need to get all three. Yeah. But, but the winner may only get two, but oh, it's the first, it's the first one with the most right answers. Yeah. Uh, and if you wins all those, all those DVDs. Hey, this is a box set, to be fair. That's pretty, that's pretty good prize, that oh, one. Oh, you could probably get, you could get two, uh, two, two CDs when you take that down to record tape exchange. Just and you don't need to see the first two seasons because you won't know what's happening anyway. Oh, okay, fine. Um, I'm excited to think that there's, um, some people now in, uh, Antarctica just scrabbling around to get a pen. Yeah. Just trying to figure them out, you know, and that'll, that'll keep, they'll, they'll probably, uh, stew on that for the next. <laughs> Two months. Phil <laughs> <laughs> Ink, Gorillas, Gorillaz, on XFM, 104.9 on Ricky Gervais with me, uh, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Mm. Carl, okay, we've got to sort this out. We didn't meet again this week and this is a shoddy show. I thought we had a sort of framework for it, but, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, uh, I thought, it'd be, uh, you know, Carl could sort of tell him what was going on. He doesn't know anything except watching telly. Late night telly on st strange channels, like he gets all his information uh, about the news on Anna Nova, and I mean, I, I even tried it out because um, Monkey News last week was awful. It wasn't Monkey I mean, News. It wasn't Monkey News. It was I, I, I can't remember. On, it. I've been away on holiday. Brilliant. Yeah, and the, the Monkey News stops. Uh, um, I, I phoned him up that on there was a, there was a front cover. Um, of the, I think it was the Telegraph one day this week, and, um, it was an ironic story, it was a fluff piece, but it was a funny story, it was about, a um, a monkey in a, uh, in a zoo that had had a, 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 a ruck with its father, because it's adolescent, it was like the equivalent of like 16 to 18, and it had a fight with its father, and it escaped, it ran away, and it was like, you know, an interesting story. Yeah. I phoned Carl up and said, this is a monkey news, um, a monkey has escaped from its cage after an argument with its father, and he said, what was the argument about? <laughs> I mean, he thinks like Homer Simpson. Yeah. Amazing. What was the argument about? Like the zookeepers are going, oh, look, oh no, he's brought up his untidy room again. The father, oh look, he's caught him smoking again. Oh. I mean, what do you mean, what was the argument about? They have fights. Oh. They have fights and then it ran away. His dad wanted him to go to college, but he just wants to quit and get a job. <laughs> yeah. And he, he fancied a monkey in the other cage. And the father was saying, she's not good enough for you. No. Oh. So what was it about? News today? Uh, yeah, I got a little bit of monkey news. You got a little bit of monkey news, right? Yeah. You've redeemed yourself right. then this we, week. We've got some stuff there and that. Uh, what else has been going on? You were, uh, what are we going to talk about now? So I've got, so I've had to come now. Your head's yeah, got gone. monkey news. Yeah. And, why uh, is your brain, why is it, you, f you it seems like since we've come back on air, you have become dimmer. I mean, it is extraordinary. It's like, it's like BSC has kicked in. Or did really we just are. forget? We just forgot Maybe what? Maybe it's been a long time we've forgotten just how stupid he is. Yeah. Uh, it's so proper, do you mean, it's, pr it's the silences. You know, yeah. he forgets we're on the radio. There's just I know, dead it's, air. it's unbelievable. And oh. it's, it's our name uh, on I this. Know. They put a poem. But oh, as I said before, you know, he is, he is, uh, 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 no offence, he's, he's not a bright, bright lad or educated or anything like that. Yeah, but well, some things he says does border on the retarded. I've been trying to take in too much information though, that's, that's the problem recently. Well, I said to you last week, I've been like reading more books and what have you, and trying to take in too much, but the problem is, like even, even watching telly and that now, Suzanne said to me, you know, stop doing that, stop watching telly late at night and going to bed, because it's, it's making your brain too active. And I'm sort of- Heaven forbid. And I, you know, I'm trying to get to sleep and I can't, and then when I wake up, I'm th she, she had a go at me the other day, right? Because it was the night after watching The Fat Baby, right? Woke up in the morning and, uh, she had a go at me because as soon as I woke up, I said, um, it was something like, how can you freeze time? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, aren't you gonna say good morning or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burst! Just imagine it, right? It's a, it's that the sun comes up through the window. Oh, she's right. Carl's like that, his little head. He, he, his eyes open, he goes, one of those floppy night hats. <laughs> How can you freeze time? Oh, God. Well, it's because, like, whatever, the night before I might have heard that on the news or whatever, and it's just been sort of whizzing round my head. Sure. And, um, you know, <laughs> the, it was a big debate. I think they found, <laughs> they, have they found a way of doing it or something? What are you and talking about? They've done something about freezing time and all that. 
Oh, but see, this isn't information. This is nothing. That is nothing, that. They've done some about freezing time. Imagine Jeremy Paxman coming on, going, well, the issues tonight said something about freezing time. <laughs> it's you you uh, think before you talk. No, but I, I don't worry about how to do it. I just think about what effects that oh, will Oh, they haven't asked you to get involved. Well, this is what Phew. I'm saying, though. You Phew. can't explain it. It's a, it's a tough thing, isn't it? But what's the point of me worrying about It's not about a question. That? Do you know what he said to me the other day? Uh, this is unbelievable. This is one of the most stupid, incredible things I've ever heard. He was talking, and he suddenly stopped, and he was thinking about it, and he went, oh, I don't know what, he went, you'd never see a black ghost. Extraordinary. True, though, isn't it? I've never seen any ghosts, full stop. There are no ghosts. There aren't ghosts. No, but I mean when you just see them in, like, magazines and that. <laughs> <laughs> Play a record! <laughs> Hope there's someone. Anthony and the Johnsons. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Interesting. Hope there's someone. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Well, Carl, um, more, uh, revelation. Um, we were talking about it last week, but Carl brought it up again, just now. Uh, didn't want to go to the doctors, didn't want to have a full sort of body checkup that may save his life because he saw on the website they do. A, a, a test where they have to insert a finger in his ass. Well, don't tell me about it. Why? Don't put it on the website. Just put, we look at your heart. Yeah. We check your blood pressure out. Yeah. And then they, they could just do it quickly. You could just sort of say, right. How uh, would they do it quickly? No, but what I'm saying is it's, it's worse than it going in there knowing that, I mean, they've got it on the website. So you, you're on the journey on the bus thinking, in about 20 minutes I'm gonna have a finger up my arm. But, they're doctors. Yeah, but just they're not doing it for a laugh. They're not filming it with a two-way screen. <laughs> they're not putting on boxing gloves so it hurts more. They're <laughs> up. Oh, it's a prostate. Right, out again. Out again. I'm just saying in the day, saying in the, day the sort of. Do you think they're in the pub going? Here he comes. It's Pilkington. I have my finger up his arse. Do they allow ladies to do that? Do they allow female doctors to of do it? Of course they do. They're doctors. No, that's, that's worse. Though. You're sounding. You're sounding like him. No, I'm just interested in because you know. Do they allow female doctors to do the finger up the arse thing? Well, of course they do. They're doctors. Forget the female and male. They are doctors. Right. Do you know any female doctors to do that? <laughs> but what I mean is, uh, isn't it a bit like if you're being searched at an airport, you know, and you're a woman, they send in a woman person to search you. They don't. They don't send in a bloke to do it. Is that the same thing? Yeah. I mean, they, they probably trust someone who's gone through uh, six years medical college not to be taking the piss as opposed to a fat security guard who couldn't get anything else. Do you know what I mean? What are you talking about? There's doctors all the time coming out in the papers. Oh, they gave them this so they could look at their boobs or whatever. Or, you know, it's all well, like you're no, always hearing stuff about dodgy doctors. But what I'm saying is the reason why they do that security because there's there's lots of security people and they can you know for your own you know for the, the you know um, your own modesty they. There's a female one to search females and a male one to search males and that's fine. But th there's not like four or five GPs to choose from and you go in there and you go, is it, is it your ass and testicles? Do you want a bloke or a it, you know, what it, you, you accept it. they got long fingernails? They don't have long fingernails. What do you think of this, this female GP looks like? She's sitting behind the desk like Cruella de Vil with a, with a, with cleavage and long red false nails going, hello love, bend over, this may hurt a little bit. There, they, there's, there's gloves and Vaseline, you d it, it, I mean, uh, they I'm, I don't believe well, there's two of you now in the room. Carl, they're doctors. They have to f- they, uh, what would you rather do than put the hand down your throat and round your elementary canal to feel your ass? It's a quicker way in. You seem to know a lot about these doctors and stuff thinkers on people's asses. You're a very well informed gentleman. What about this sort of thing? <laughs> well, say, say if they did find something. Yeah. Um, would you then have to get like a second opinion so someone else's no. finger? No. Well, no. They, they test it to see if there's anything suspicious. That it's usually uh, a, a, a swollen prostate, which which can be anything. Um, so they, you know, they catch it early, and that's it. They fit. They fear up there. But if you want a second opinion, then the same doctor will just stick a thumb up and have a feel around them. <laughs> so it always works in the same way. Yeah. Well, uh, if there's you know, if there's a doctor who can, I don't know, put me at ease. I mean, surely there's another way around it. I don't believe that. I mean, what is this? Sixty million people, or something in the world, isn't it? Sixty billion, or something. Uh, well, six billion, something. Yes, you got it. Right. You hit it. Well done. That's good work. Right. So yeah, this this six what oh, six billion did it? Yeah. What's six billion then? Loads, isn't it? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> so if you you want a doctor to come up <laughs> to assure you that the finger at the bum thing is not painful and that it's necessary and just that, that it's that not it's necessary, really. Really. It's just that it's not an easy way round. All right. What's you know the what phone number here? It's uh. We've changed, haven't we? Oh, for. <laughs> You're I mean, the producer. Here it is. Here it is. Oh eight seven one. 
222-1049, and I think you, you select option one. It tells you anyway what to do. Please, if, if, if you're a GP, <laughs> or, or you've, you know, even if you've completed medical, I mean, we, we want a qualified doctor, really. Anything else is not good enough for Carl Wilkington. Um, just to, to uh, we'd love to, you can ask him all the other questions. Cause you know, Carl, as I said last week, he, he, he doesn't, f um, feel his own testicles cause he doesn't like the feel. Yeah. So, you know, I'd like a doctor to explain to him uh, how necessary well, I, that I, is. And this is truthful as well, I've got a very slight pain around the genital area at the moment and I'm not, I think it might be some kind of groin strain but I'm a little bit anxious, not entirely sure Yeah, what I it is, so. I, I'm, I, 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 you've been with me twice when I've gone along to get them checked. Yeah. And I go, oh, what's that? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. I mean, but, you know, it's usually, you, you, you're, I think you're in a pretty low risk, aren't you? I'd hope so. You're coming out of the 20s. I think it's a, I think testicular sort of, I shouldn't be doing this, I'm not qualified. No. Uh, they, they told me, all they said was to me is sort of like, it's 20s and 50s. Mine. So, like, we're into it. <laughs> mine sort of felt like they dropped a bit the other week when I was on holiday. I don't know if that's, like, when you're relaxing or, <laughs> I was wearing shorts a lot. How far? If it's two foot, it's too far. I was having problems walking. <laughs> Why? Well, it, it was just a bit, sort of, a bit, I, I had shorts on all day, I'm happy and walking about on the beach, what have you, mm. and then at the night when I put some long trousers on, I, I was sort of walking like well, they probably, they probably like stretch a little bit. Sometimes, uh, I, I told you when I was about 18, I was scared. I, I, I went to, uh, the doctor, I, I felt a pain, right? And, uh, I was, cause I was doing biology, I thought I'd show off this doctor. I said, I've got a pain. I think it feels like it starts in the epididymis and goes up to, through the urethra by the, and, uh, he went, Finger up the he said, your jeans are too tight, they're squashing your balls. <laughs> so, uh, we want a doctor like that. So what's the phone number again? It's, uh, 0871. <laughs> Two 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 one zero four nine. A qualified. What, what do you mean the balls drop though? We've got to come back to this. I don't know. They just felt like uh, it's not too bad at the moment. I was all right on the way in, but it was just I, felt, I feel twinges all the time. But you never know whether it's just, it's just because. Felt, in... But they felt like they weren't my own. Do you know what I mean? It, they sort of felt a bit like these. Were there wasn't a bloke standing really close to you, was there? No, you just got mixed up just on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> on the flight back. So Someone else has got. Well, well, do take a um, leaf out of nudist books. They just walk around. They've they oh, got nothing on it. about nudists. Why? Well, let's, let's play this ad break and that and- Have uh, you had another encounter? Uh, if we've got time, I'll tell you about it. Have you really? Uh, right, we've got, uh, 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 who's that on the line? It's Rob. Rob, and, uh, are you a doctor? I'm a final year medical student. I'll be a doctor in two months, touch wood. That's close enough, isn't it? Yeah. Excellent. So, um, uh, wh where do you study? Do you want to give, uh, more details or do you want to remain anonymous I, as you're calling into- I study up. Uh, all right, great. So, um, why do, uh, GPs, uh, sometimes put, uh, their finger up, um, a man's anus? To see what's there. You know, if you've got hemorrhoids, if you've got an enlarged prostate, you know, it's either that or they stick up a big tube and have a look up with a light. What? And it's easier to do that. Now, uh, are you, um, dumbing this down for us, or are you gonna fail your medical exams by saying stick up a big tube with a light? I, I'm dumbing it down. Okay, come on then. We're all intelligent people here, uh, and Carl. So you can you tell us what, now what's that called? It's called a sigmoid escape. Right. Nice. That was a clever test, wasn't it, Rick? Twelve inch long. Long. Yeah. Twelve inch long tube. I can put up there. So, Carl, would you prefer that or a finger? Well, so do they, do they sort of do the finger first, and then, I mean, at, at what point do they say, hang on, we need a light here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... It's, it's normally if there's something wrong. But, so, so if I go then, say if I go to this well-known clinic, right, and yeah. uh, they go, yeah, the art's good and that, yeah, uh, finger, yeah. there you go, and then they go, hang on, I'm, I'm gonna go and get me light and tube. I'd, I, you know, I could start worrying them because they've sort of found something. Yeah, they're, they're not likely to go straight in with the tube. They'll, they'll probably send you off some tests first. Well, Carl, there's the nothing. But right. you go to these places to, to, to put your mind at rest and to know where you are uh, with your health. I mean, it, it's not that you go along. That's, that's what most people worry about. They think that because I'll go along and they'll find something. Well, one, there's, that, that, that's, that's illogical. There's no, there's, it doesn't heighten the fact they find something because you go along. And two, if they do find something, it's a good job you went along. I mean, I'm a hypocrite because I don't go to the doctor. But, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 I, I've had that oh, done. I've you had... should be concerned if when they shine the little light in your ear, it comes out the other side of your ear. No, the other ear comes Rob, right out the other side. That's but, when you should be worried. But Rob, right, you said then, if they, if they find something, they send me off for some tests, why can't I just have the test without that and cut out the middleman? 
Do you know what yeah. I mean? Because you're wasting yeah. lots of money. There's hundreds of tests they could do, and they could do every test, and they could all come back with nothing, or they could do a finger up there and send you for the three tests you need to find out what's wrong with you. But in this day and age, with all the technology and that, and like brainy doctors and all that, the only way to find out is sticking a finger up there. What are you worried about, Carl? Is it fundamentally that uh, this doctor who's, uh, uh, um, has done six years medical training, yeah, is, is, is it embarrassing to have a man's finger up your ass? I just don't understand how you can get round to that without- But what don't you action. like? Is it fundamentally you don't like anything up your ass, or is it, uh, is it the fact that it's a man's finger well, up there? I, I don't like going to the doctors, it makes me nervous, because I think if anyone searches you long enough they're gonna find a fault with you, right? <laughs> and especially if they're going that far into you, they're gonna find something. <laughs> And Probably not. Well, you know, I, I just, I just don't, I, I don't know how to get round to that sort of, that point where you get a, what, what do you talk to the doctor about? He's like, all right, nice day. Uh, just drop your trousers. He goes, I'm just gonna, he says, I'm gonna just, um, Maybe. Uh, Maybe people just shut up and let you do it and then breathe a sigh of relief when you say there's nothing there. Yeah. But I is mean, that at the end of the test or is that the first thing he does? It's the last thing. So that trousers up out the door. Because he knows it ends conversation, he knows it's a bit of a faux pas. The, you know, the doctor says, oh I better not kick off with a finger up the arse. What I, what I do is I'll, uh, I'll start on with the, uh, you know, the head. And then what we're going to go, oh, one final thing Mr. Pilkerton. Um, so, so Rob- he, dro he drops his keys and he goes, pick them up. And as you bend over- Will, will you be doing this Rob? Is this what you're like open to do? Um, you do all these- I'll, I'll have to do it at some point. All doctors do it at some point, no matter what they specialise in. So the first one, is he another doctor there to sort of make sure no, he's doing it right? Not, not dentists. <laughs> no, but no, do you know- do you know what, aren't doctors anyway. <laughs> no. but, but do you know what I mean? Like, normally it's like a, a co-pilot will have someone with them for the first one. So when yeah. you- when you put your first finger in- Yeah. Will someone be there going, right, you just want to move well, to the I've, left I've already it. done it. Have you? Yeah. Mm. See, that's, that's the thing with a student, you're learning. So you get people teaching and, you and you learn on these things. Can I just point out, uh, Rob, I, I think I'm right in assuming that, uh, uh, you have a glove on. Yeah. And there's lubrication. Yeah. And it doesn't hurt. No. There you go. What but, are you worried about, Carl? who's this person who, who everyone's testing on in your class? <laughs> it's not one person. It's one person. There's like, when a patient comes in and they've got a problem, <laughs> your, your boss, the, like, consultant, he does his finger up, and if yeah, he finds something, he goes to the patient, is it alright if the student has a feel as well? Then well, he what? puts on a glove, puts the leave on the glove, and sticks his finger up, and sees what he comes out with. <laughs> if, oh, Rob, I wish you could see Carl's face. I mean, he just, his face when you said, then he goes, says, uh, can this fella have a go as well? He looked horrified that it was, a, he thought it was a free-for-all, like there's a queue of people trying on gloves and going, let's have a go. That looks good up there. What have you found? No, but I mean, how come you had to sort of, is it not something you could test on yourself rather than waiting for other people to come in? <laughs> because then yeah, you know- That's an awkward can... position to get to really, isn't it? <laughs> well, but you can have a good rummage then without feeling too awkward, but to, f to sort of have a go on, on your first patient when you don't really know what you're looking for anyway, do you know what I mean? Never really thought about it. Because you don't, if, if you've never done it before, you pop your finger in there, and you've got a sort of look, you've got to have an expression on your face like you know what, you, what you're what finding. Well, they can't see what you look, they can't see you your you face. There. You've got the, the big boss consultant there going, um, now move your finger there and you'll probably feel this. Because he's just done it, he knows what's there. Well, what, what oh, so you're, he's already had a go, he's yeah. had a feel, and he's going, right, if you feel to the right, that's the conglomerate yeah. or whatever. Mm, the conglomerate, yeah. The, it's conglomerate is in perfect right, working well, order. Uh, well, that's, I'm still Thank you, Rob. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to go, to go through this. Um, Carl is probably the worst patient you'll ever encounter in your medical career. Good luck mm. with your finals and, uh, and thanks very much. And, uh, do you know any female doctors who do this? Or? Thank you. XFM 104.9. Thank you. Josh Rags, it's the night time on XFM 104.9. Uh, Steve Merchant, Ricky Gervais, Carl Pilkington. Um, and, uh, what we, what, is, is it time? Is I it think, time? I think so. Yeah? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right then, so uh, there's this monkey, right? Right. In Canada, it's in a zoo in uh, Toronto, I think it is. Mm. Um, his name's Pascal, right? And uh, what happened was all the, the people in the zoo uh, sort of said, you know, what can we do? Uh, sort of spice the day up a bit. Right? Yeah. So they left- Embellishing. Uh, no way this is a news story. Yeah. Okay. 
So they, they Any left. dates? Just uh, let him read the news, all well, right? They, he I, wouldn't I, interrupt I, Moira Stewart. He's an <laughs> No, because she always says, today, <laughs> so you know it's news. She doesn't say, right, there was a monkey, right? Yeah, right. Well, in well, Canada, right? right? Just finish okay. the right. A couple of weeks ago, in this zoo in Canada. Right. Um, Jesus. They got a camcorder. Right. And they said, let's, let's leave it for the, uh, for the monkey to have a, a play with. Right. So, um, anyway, they, they passed w it around. Won a BAFTA. And a couple of chimps and that were rubbish at it. They were like filming the floor and all that and the fingers were always in shot and stuff like that, right? But anyway, there was one, this, this one chimp called Pascal, right? Who, uh... Annoys me that he calls them monkeys though. He they're was, not monkeys, they're he apes. Was, he, was a, he was a dab hand at it, right? He was like, <laughs> uh, filming stuff, really good shots, you know, sort of nice nude and that. He used the lighting properly and all the rest of it. <laughs> no, right? he didn't! Just let, this is this the news? What are you talking about? This is the news? <laughs> God, so Steve anyway. is so annoying. He know it annoys me so much. <laughs> Things like that. He was a dab under. He was doing really good shots. It really annoys me. Let's Any, hear the anyway, news. Anyway, right, so he started, uh, at night, like, when the zookeepers went home, he started filming, like, other monkeys on, on the go, like, like, whilst they were at it, right? And he was filming them and what have you. <coughs> the Ron Jeremy of I the zoo. It. You yeah. know it's gonna end up on the web. <laughs> So anyway, the zookeepers came in the next day and it's like, let's see what shots he's got. Anyway, he's got all this like, you know, all these monkeys at it and what have you. So, oh, yeah, um, this is, uh, uh, honestly, so, you so, don't know what this is doing to me, Steve. So, Can I stop him now? So they thought like, uh, actually there's a few monkeys who, who aren't at it enough. Do you know what I mean? They have problems and what have you, so let's give them the videos. That is so it. untrue! This is so untrue! So, it's so untrue that it was filmed by a monkey! So it's what so happened untrue! Then, right? Rick, I don't know so, who to believe. <laughs> Oh God! You're talking so much shit again. So you must know that's not true. There's so no way. There's a load of tapes out. Look at me! Honest. Look at me! Don't keep talking. Look at me! Yeah. You must know that's not true. Can it's we just hear the end of this it's news? You. you had a go at me last week because I didn't have the full story. I've got the full story. You're still not happy. There is no way mm. that b by chance one all this. Oh, what should we do? Let's give him a camcorder. That could happen. Yeah. He then films him at it. That might happen. It might happen, but I don't think he'd keep the camera still. Uh, uh, 